Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, go ahead and hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss out on this kind of content in future. By chance, if this is not your first time on the channel, you may want to seek some professional help. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate you being here for this absolutely fine hot garbage content. For today's deck profile, we are looking at Jinzo Orcust. Jinzo is a bit of a classic monster, and of course people want to be able to play it in a deck that works. And playing it with Orcust makes it somewhat viable. It's certainly not a super competitive strategy to go with, but the Orcus deck definitely carries the Jinzo cards and makes them playable. So if you're someone who's enthusiastic about a classic card like Jinzo, this certainly gives you a way to play it. It's also worth noting that Jinzo had some relatively new support come out fairly recently. And as such, there are more ways to basically play the card and make best use of it. If you're watching this deck profile and you feel inspired to go out and pick up the deck, you should check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There'll be a link in the description for a discount on their eBay store. And they don't just do Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, they do Pokemon as well. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So let me first apologise in advance if there are any weird noises in the background. It has been snowing and it sent the horses next door absolutely ape shit. Seriously, they're out there making all kinds of neighing sounds and fucking jumping around and running around and going absolutely mental. So if you hear any of that, my apologies. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's have a look at the profile. So we start off with triple copies of Jinzo. It wouldn't be a very good Jinzo deck if we weren't playing it now, would it? We are playing in a format in which there is a lot more back row going on and actually Jinzo would be kind of useful right now. Probably not as strong as it once was, but certainly not the worst option in the world. And in a deck like this, it has a lot of natural synergy. I made reference earlier to the new Jinzo support, so we are covering some of that in this video here. We've got Jinzo, the Machine Menace. Again, just an anti-trap card, all of that good stuff. Nice and easy to summon out as well. Uh, again, just a half-decent option to run in here. You could cut this if you want to stick it a little bit more pure and you don't necessarily want to utilize that new support. But I thought that given this was a Jinzo deck profile, we'd want to sort of make as much use as what we possibly can out of those Jinzo cards. Next up, we have Psychic Mega Cyber. It's not Jinzo by name, but it's very much a Jinzo card by nature. Basically what this does is a load of shit in battle, putting your opponent's monsters into their zones as continuous traps, flooding their back row, and on top of that it's a free body that you can get on board, which is something nice because you can then overlay that for your rank plays, or of course link that off down the line. Again, this is one of the newer cards, so you could certainly omit this if you really wanted to. I thought it'd be really nice to include it though, and it definitely does come up in testing. We also have Psychic Bounder, a really good way to search your Jinzo cards What's not to like about that? It's also off a normal or a special summon, so it doesn't matter how you get it out. So you don't necessarily have to eat your normal summon to get into your Jinzo cards. Originally in testing, I was running more copies of this, but I realized that we had too many normal summons already in the deck. And although this can go off on the special summon, you definitely don't want it to be that card you have just sat in your hand waiting to be used with no real way to resolve or benefit from it. We then move on to our Orcus package, which I'd say is pretty standard. Two copies of World Wand. Uh, this is just an engine requirement. Three copies of Orcus Nightmare. Again, I'd say it's a pretty much mandatory ratio. We've got triple copies of Gear to the Orcus Mech Knight. This can help set up your plays. And of course, we're setting up so many back rows that we can take advantage of that as well. We have triple copies of Symbol Skeleton. Again, I'd say it's pretty mandatory. You could potentially go down to two, but I don't really see that you would. And we have a single copy of Brass Bombard. Because it's a way to unclog your hand, it's another Orcus name. What's not to like about that? There's also the fact that it's a tuner. So if you did want to go down the route of playing Halka Fibrax, that is something you could consider. Following on from that, we have the Brothers of Destruction, Dark Greffa, and Armageddon Knight. Uh, these two bad boys here, well, you know what they do. They're Foolish Burials, what's not to like about that? They're searchable, they're dark, all the good stuff. Really good cards to open in your hand. We then play a small danger package. We're playing a single copy of Nessie, a single copy of Suchinoko, a single copy of Jackalope, and a single copy of of Mothman. You could up this if you really wanted to, especially if you wanted to play more of a going second build. Uh, I decided that these four were basically the four best options that you could go with. You could potentially play like Chupacabra if you wanted to play more names, but honestly I think that these four are basically the most free out of all of your options. They're going to help you dig a bit deeper, they're going to help you get extra names on board, which will help you go into your link plays, all of that good stuff. And then finally for our monsters in the main deck we have one copy of Gizmek Orochi. This card is absolutely insane. Anyone who's played any kind of Orcus variant or any deck in fact that can take advantage of this card knows how strong it is. It'll help you keep in games and it will certainly win you them as well. 
To make it all better, of course, is a level 8, so it has some synergy with the rest of the Orcus package, allowing you to easier make a rank 8 play. We then move on to our spells here. I've definitely taken some liberties by including some of the new Jinzo support. Some of it could definitely be cut, but I thought it was really cool to include it, just to keep in with the theme. But again, you could certainly shuffle these out if you really wanted to. Let's be honest, though, if we're playing a Jinzo deck, we're not taking our life too seriously anyway. So we've got a single copy of Everlasting Alloy. This is just protection. Cyber Energy Shock for just generating some advantage, popping cards, all that good stuff. Psychic Wave allows us to grind a little bit more. It just gives you another option and line of play. And being a quick play spell has some benefits as well. Cosmos Channeling. The idea here is, of course, getting hand knowledge, all of that good stuff. And the fact that you can potentially draw cards off this is really cool. We then move on to our standard spells that you'd expect in an Orcus deck. We're running a single copy of Return. You can potentially up this to two, but I think one is plenty. A single copy of Babel. Uh, well, one is all you need. You really don't want to clog on more than that. We've got triple copies of Allure of Darkness. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Pretty much everything in the deck is dark. What's not to like about that? A single copy of Foolish Burial because it sets up all of your plays. A single copy of Reinforcements of the Army because of those two bad boys that we're running in the main deck. A single copy of Call by the Grave because Hand Traps suck ass and we really need a way to be able to deal with them and allow our players to continue as normal. We're running a single copy of Orcus Crescendo. This is pretty self-explanatory as well. This is sort of your standard negate you're going to end on first turn. Of course there's a little bit of confliction here with Jinzo but it does also have a graveyard effect so you can take advantage of that too. And we're running triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. It's good going first or second. What's not to like about that? Also the fact that it there is some conflict there with Jinzo. But I think overall the benefits outweigh the negatives. And I think that it's a card that you need to include. If you really wanted to omit it though. You could run something like Forbidden Droplet. So there's no conflict there. You could also run cards like Effect Veiler. Although I think with Dangers you want to run as few hand traps as possible. We then move on to our extra deck. We're not running a side deck in this particular build. Keep in mind that, of course, you're going to be playing the different kinds of events and all that good stuff. Depending on what you're playing against, depends on what you'd put in the side. Jinzo Laid is really, really cool. It's a uh, a mind control in a card, and the fact that you contribute that card off to then pop another. It's a really cool card that you can definitely take advantage of in this deck. And I'm just running a couple of copies there. You're never going to go into a third. In fact, most often, you'll probably only go into the one. If you really wanted to, you could cut an extra one for another utility card. But I felt the two was really cool in keeping with the theme. Beatrice being able to send any card from the deck to the graveyard is really nice. It can help set up your plays, and getting two sixes on board is certainly possible in this deck. With that in mind, having this in there is a really cool option to have. It gives you good utility and being able to set that off during your opponent's turn is really nice as well. But then we move on to our Orcus package. I'd say this is pretty standard. One copy of Dingirsu, a single copy of Longirsu, and two copies of Galatea. If you wanted, you could go up to the third Galatea for a little bit more grind game. But honestly, I think the deck is grindy enough and isn't quite necessary at the moment. We then move on to our links here. We've got Borosaur Dragon for OTKs. Curious because we can make it in again, much like Beatrice, being able to dump anything into the grave is really nice. And the fact that it recurs resources as well is really cool. We then have our Nightmare package here. Probably put those the wrong way around there. These two here nightmare phoenix and nightmare unicorn both really good utility cards that you can go into off ip mascarena during your opponent's turn is really cool being able to remove back row and spin monsters both really nice barricade board blocker for all intents and purposes basically they're just for dumping cards into the grave ip mascarena as discussed earlier just again a really good card to set up on your turn one so you can interrupt your opponent and then we've got two options here for our level ones so we've got link Rebo and relinquished anima depending on what your needs are at the time both have their benefits and that, my fellow duelists, is all for today's video. I do really appreciate you coming along and making it this far into the video. If you have, you're one of few that actually do. And I'd love to hear from you if you did. And although we are on a slew of deck profiles at the moment, mostly due to the content being a little bit dry at the moment, due to the... Uh unnamed thing that I don't want to get demonetized for saying. We do have an array of other content that does come up from time to time as well. How to play videos, combo tutorials, all that good stuff. If you want to see any of that or if there's anything you'd like to see that you haven't seen on the channel so far, definitely let me know down in the comments. Again, thank you very much for making it this far and if you did enjoy the video, make sure you have hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss out on this kind of fucking nonsense in future. Thanks again for coming along and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.